so you've been looking at the armour of God, uh, belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, and now shoes of gospel readiness. So I'm going to read Ephesians 6, 15. Just that one verse, Ephesians 6, 15, from the ESV. Paul exhorts us to, as shoes for our feet, put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. The readiness given by the gospel of peace. You'll notice, of course, if you've read the full list, that most weapons or garments in this list are defensive rather than offensive designed to withstand rather than to attack. This, of course, is consistent with Paul's overarching statement in verse 11. <coughs> Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Stand against the schemes of the devil. We are not to go looking for the devil or to pick a fight with him. But we are to be prepared for his attacks, aware of his schemes, as 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11 puts it. So for this reason, most of the armour is defensive rather than offensive. It's defensive armour as opposed to offensive weaponry. So the picture is one of active resistance. There are, however, two exceptions to this rule. They are the sword of the spirit, which you'll come to in due course, and the shoes of gospel readiness, our subject for today. Shoes, of course, serve a twin purpose. They provide protection and stability, enabling us to stand firm in Paul's language. And they also provide mobility. They enable us to get moving. In this context, in the context of today's verse, they equip us to march into battle and to defeat the enemy. So let's look a bit more closely at these two concepts, stability and mobility, and see how they apply to our walk as Christians. Firstly, stability. Protection and stability. Our situation may be different from that of first century soldiers to whom Paul was referring. But the battle of faith is no less intense. We may not be enlisted in an earthly war, and we hope and pray never to be so, of course. That's particularly on our mind at the moment. But, but the battle of faith is intense. As Paul puts it in verse 12 of today's chapter, for we wrestle, for, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In other words, we are engaged in spiritual warfare. Not only are we subject to demonic attack, but we wrestle often as a manifestation of said attack with say to us. Though we may not say so openly, we can sometimes feel that God isn't doing what he ought to do or even what he has promised to do. You know, we're promised joy unspeakable in 1 Peter 1 verse 8. Peace unexplainable in Philippians. And sometimes God does not seem to be fulfilling his side of the bargain. And we can be tempted, therefore, to throw in the towel. I know I've felt like that on occasion, and I'm not the only one. To anyone who feels that way, Paul encourages us to put on the shoes of gospel readiness. What does this mean? Well, the answer is very simple, although it can take a lifetime to implement. 
The enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. He aims to rob us. He he aims to <coughs> rob our joy, undermine our security, and ultimately to throw us off course. We must therefore clothe ourselves with the peace that only God can provide through the gospel. When, for instance, we turn on the news and for the first time in decades uh, see that we face the very real threat of world war or nuclear escalation, we need the peace that only God can provide through the gospel. Think about it. What, in, in what way does the gospel provide peace? Well, we may fear on an earthly level the escalation of, say, the conflict in Ukraine. We may fear what Putin and his cohorts may do to us and the impact that that, the, that, that may have on the world. But as Christians, the fear of God has been removed. We have come face to face with the living God the God who cannot abide or tolerate sin and being pronounced not guilty, forgiven, welcome in his presence. You know, uh, the, the possibility, the threat, the fear of nuclear war or whatever it might be is nothing compared to the certainty that each one of us, every human being who has ever lived, every human who will ever live, and every person here today will one day meet God face to face and be confronted with the reality of our sin and the sure and certain imminence of judgment. But in Christ, the fear of that has been removed. How can we therefore fear, in an ultimate sense, what any man may do to us or what circumstances may bring? May God help us by his spirit to be so captivated by the gospel that we are filled with peace. So shoes provide protection and stability, but they also serve another purpose. So let's look now at mobility. Verse 15 again. Put on the readiness of the readiness given by the gospel of peace. We are to get moving. That's the picture here. And most likely, Paul has in mind the words of Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. We should be zealous and proactive in sharing the gospel. We should be running to share the good news and to pass on the peace that we ourselves have experienced. I think it's fair to say that evangelism stands alongside prayer and Bible reading as the one subject most likely to produce guilt in Christians. It's the easiest thing in the world, therefore, for a preacher to stand up and make his or her hearers feel guilty. We've all been there, haven't we? You know, I, I don't mean this to condemn, but how often do you share the gospel? Or even, how dare we be ashamed to share the gospel? <coughs> how dare we care more about our reputation than the eternal destiny of our hearers and the honour of God's name? We've all heard this, and of course it's a legitimate challenge in its place. But it's not the approach that I want to take this morning. Instead, I want to inspire you with a positive vision of the gospel, so that you are compelled, not pressured, but compelled to share it. Having been granted such peace and joy through the gospel, how can we keep from passing it on. How can we possibly keep it to ourselves? You know, it's, it's not simply a negative threat or fear 
that motivates us to evangelise. It's not simply that we want people to be saved from hell. It's that we want them to experience the poverty of peace and joy that we know and that can't be found anywhere else. So when we, for instance, when I, for instance, hear colleagues or family members, as I sometimes have, uh, 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 openly confessing their fear and trepidation at what's happening in the world and at what may come, how can I, as a Christian, refrain from pointing them to the peace that I know? And when we do that, we are not simply resisting the devil's attacks. We are positively marching out into the world, tramping out the kingdom of God wherever we go, bringing people in and helping to advance the inbreaking kingdom of God that will one day fill and rule the earth. It can be very simple. It can just be a one sentence testimony to the peace that you found in Christ but that can have an eternal impact in the spiritual realm so I pray this morning that God will inspire and equip each one of us to do just that may we, may we be protected from everything that the world and the devil may throw our way. May we stand firm against his attacks and not be moved. That's what Paul encourages us to do here, verse 11, that you may be able to stand against the, scheme, the schemes of the devil. And then again in verse 13, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. That may not seem spectacular, it may not look spectacular in the visible realm when we simply hold on to our faith, keep putting one foot in, in front of the other, keep turning up to church each week, no matter how hard it is. That may not seem spectacular, but in Paul's mind, in, um, according to a biblical framework, means that we are resisting the full onslaught of demonic attack. We are triumphing over Satan and all his cohorts. We are winning the spiritual war in God's strength. So may God fill us with his spirit and grant us his peace so that we are able to stand firm. And may he furthermore anoint us with his spirit so that we are equipped to march out into the world and claim the greatest.